we can see that there are some abnormalities in the images. And chest X images are found to be useful for monitoring a variety of lung disease in the earlier studies. That's why we choose to uh, detect COVID-19. We use the chest X image because one of the characteristics of COVID-19 patient that it has some abnormality in the chest X. -ray. So there are some traditional methods. One of the very popular method is PCR to COVID-19 detection, but it has some limitation. First of all, it is very expensive and time consuming, and also it gives false positive. And we cannot know the amount of the infected area in the lungs. Also, oh, not always the PCR kit is available. That's why we switch to the another methods, which is imaging modalities. And there are two types of images available. One is computed tomography or CT scan. Another one is chest X-ray or CXR. So we have uh, choose the chest X-ray for our work because it has some advantages over CT scan. One of them is it has low radiation dose. It is also easy to use and it is more affordable. But there are some challenges with chest X-ray for COVID-19 detection. One of them is it requires many time and effort for manual sorting of chest X-ray. Also, it is very difficult in identifying COVID-19 pneumonia cases among individuals and we need very good radio radiologists to uh, find the pattern which is COVID-19 and which is COVID non-COVID-19. That's why we need an automated decision support system. The main purpose of automated decision support system is to enhance the effectiveness, speed and accuracy of COVID-19 pneumonia diagnosis. We also need to mind about the time and hardware complexity because it is a very challenge since the data set also very large. That's why we and also transfer learning gives us a very good result, but in the transfer learning, the number of trainable parameters is very high, which is a bad thing for a resource limited devices. That's why my, our main focus was to customize a CNN model that will have a less number of parameters. So the objective, main objective of our task is to classify the binary classification of COVID-19, which is normal and COVID-19 from chest X images, we'll build a lightweight customized deep CNN model for the classification. And since we are calling it lightweight in our architecture, we did not use any conventional convolution block because it has a greater number of parameters. A separable convolution block was replaced instead of convolutional block that gives us a few parameters. And this enables the efficient resource utilization and faster computation for classification. So there are some literatures that has been done over the over the years in this first work. They have proposed a 22 layer CNN architecture and they did both multi classification and binary classification. But one of the limitations that the, they did not address the issue of class imbalance and also they did not use any image enhancement technique. In the next work, they did a work of lung segmentation using unit and also there is a problem that they used uh, augmentation technique, which is not ideal for medical images. They though they um, did a uh, quite good accuracy, but since we can see that the sensitivity of this result is very low, we can say that that one of the reasons of this low sensitivity can be the use of augmentation. In the next work, they have uh, proposed some machine vision for COVID-19 detection, and also they have used transfer learning but the data set they used in this work was biased. For the next work, we have seen they achieved around 100% test accuracy. One of the reasons that they use very low amount of data for classification, because in the earlier, it, it was not available many data for COVID-19. So this data set in this research was not ideal. In the next work, uh, they also obtained a very good accuracy for both binary and multi-class classification, but the number of trainable parameters in their model is very high, which is around 1.16 million. They used the dark copy net for the detection and 1000 images were used for the binary class classification. In the next work, we also focus on the number of trainable parameter because we want to reduce the size of our proposed model and reduce the size of the trainable parameters. The number of trainable parameters in here is very high, but they received a quite good accuracy, which is 98.55%. So the research gap we have said, said here or see that the, one of the research gap is the data set is very imbalanced, so we have to deal with it. And another one is that the number of uh, parameters in those models is very high. So it is very 
uh, it is a disadvantage for the devices with limited computational capabilities like the smartphone, etc. So the data set we have used in this work is uh, has two class COVID-19 and normal and they have both 13,888 uh, images and we can see that the data set is highly imbalanced. So that's why we use class imbalance score in the training. So this is a just uh, a normal representation of no, a COVID-19 patient, which is 75% affected and a normal chest X-ray, which is very well defined. So this is our proposed approach, the overall proposed approach of our work. In the first, we collect the data set of COVID-19 data set, and we then level it into two classes, normal and two, uh, COVID-19. In the next step, we have done some pre-processing like reshaping the image and rescaling, which is normalization. After that, we have used CLAHE, which is the image enhancement technique. And after applying CLAHE, we get a improved accuracy. Then we split the data set into two sets for training and testing. 60% of the data goes for training and 40% of data goes for testing. Then we built our proposed lightweight parallel separable convolutional neural network. and using this network we have changed our training data set and the we saved the best model using the network uh, so the best model was used for the evaluation this is the rep representation of our work before applying CAHE and after applying CLAHE we can see that the image improve has happened after applying CLAHE it get a more better resolution of the image this is our proposed architecture, the proposed architecture of our model. After pre-processing the image, we have used uh, this architecture for our training. After pre-processing, we immediately added a Gaussian noise to introduce some randomness in our network. Then our network has been divided into two parallel parts and the, both the architecture of the parallel parts is same. We can see that there are five convolutional neural network in each branch and uh, we have proposed actually two models one using a normal convolutional layer and another using a depth wise separable convolutional layer in this representation i have introduced the depth wise convolution so in every convolution block we have used a depth wise convolution layer along with the batch normalization and max pooling so there are five convolution in total 10 convolution layers in both of the branches in depth-wise convolu convolution, it is it has a depth-wise convolution and point-wise convolution, which results to give us a fewer parameters. And also, it is computationally fast. One of the reasons of fast computation is that we have introduced a parallel branch. That's why it will uh, extract more features. And also, since they are working simultaneously, it will compute faster. Uh, we have used uh, different types of filters uh, for the fast convolution. It has 32 filters and uh, for the middle is 64 filters but for each convolution the filter size was three by three after that two branches were merged together and we have applied it to the dense layer and in the last dense layer we have introduced a dropout layer to reduce the overfitting and at last we have our proposed uh, objective was to identify normal and covid 19 patient and that was our target classes so our focus was to get a uh, trainable parameters lower. That's why we have introduced separable convolution. So let's talk about some. It, it the separable convolution splits the convolution into two steps. One is stepwise and another is pointwise. Stepwise controls each input channel individually and point pointwise combines pitch and maps using one by one kernel. The results that using that separable convolution, it is keeping us a efficient and parameter friendly, ideal for resource limited devices. So it is the result of our binary class classification. We can see that we have proposed two models. One is lightweight parallel CNN. In this, para, uh, in this model, we have used just a convolution layer, normal conventional convolutional layer with the parallel branches. And the next one is lightweight parallel separable CNN. So, in this architecture, we have used depth-wise separable convolutional layer instead of normal convolution layer. So here we can see that the accuracy is almost same. There is a little decrease in the accuracy, which is 99.21%, which is kind of a trade-off. And also the number of parameters decreases greatly in the, our main proposed approach. It, uh, came, it goes from the 313 to 224,000 parameters. 
and the accuracy did not decrease that much. One is 99.25% and another is 99.21%. And this is the confusion matrix of our proposed models, which is lightweight parallel CNN and lightweight depthwise parallel separable CNN. And this is the uh, ROC curve for both of the architecture. So in this slide, we have compared uh, many of the studies with our proposed architecture. So our proposed model here is the last one. We can see that the number of images is different. So it is not very ideal to compare with those. But if we can see the tenable number of tenable parameters, we can see that uh, those who use the transfer learning, the tenable parameters is so much high. But since we have used a customized CNN, our tenable param number of parameter is very low. In fact, those models who have used custom CNN, like in reference 14 or uh, 16, they also have a more parameters compared to others. We also got a good accuracy compared since we have used the number of images very high. The accuracy is very satisfactory in our result compared to the others. And we also managed to keep the number of tenable parameters very low. Uh, these are the reference for my presentation. Thank you. If you have any question, please ask. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we will have some time for questions. Does anybody have any question? So here in the chat room. Chat. Okay. Um, First, uh, in, in your in the block diagram about the convolutional ne neural network, there is a Gaussian noise block. What is the purpose yes. in the first block? The purpose of using the Gaussian noise is to introduce some randomness in our model. But why why do you need to, to introduce noise? Uh, the introduce of randomness will get if any images has very blur image or it has a very noisy image then if we change our model with some uh, initialized random noise then it can detect the images that has that kind of noise so it will get it will perform a little bit better for images with noisy with noise images did you did you test with all this block difference uh, uh, I'm sorry, did you I test hear uh, using uh, this network with, without this block? Uh, I did not check the accuracy without Gaussian noise. Uh, also, another another question. Um, this this model, I, I I understand that it is useful when there are uh, resources, limited resources. So um, in, in in what what scenario is is this possible? Uh, you just you talk about a smartphone. Uh, when when is it possible to detect COVID with a okay. smartphone? So, in, so in what so place? Anyone uh, want to uh, you anyone want to build an app? And in that app, we need to make it so like that when it takes a chest X-ray images, it can detect the patient is has COVID nineteen or not. So in the if we use the app in some smartphone, then the the size of our model needs to be very small so that it can support because the smartphone also is a resource limited devices. That was our focus that if we make the parameters lower, it will support this kind of devices and people can easily track if they had any kind of lung disorder along with the COVID-19. OK, OK, so and did you measure the compute, computing time? Uh, can you please repeat the question? Okay. Did you measure the computing time? Oh, no. Uh, actually, no, I did not measure the computing time. It is a great suggestion. I will do that in the next. Uh, 
but what, what, more or less, how, how many minutes uh, do you spend to classify an image? It's, it's uh, almost <coughs> instantaneously. And this is a two class classification. I'm sorry, I did not hear the question properly. Anybody has 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 anybody the authors are uh, Robert Williams, Scorcia Varela, Rosie Ortega Palacios, and Lilian Rodriguez Guerrero. And the name of the, of the paper is Classification of EEG Signals from Imagine Hand Movements Based on a Model of Executed Movements. Uh, are they ready? Hi, yeah. Mm, one minute. screen and turn on your okay can you share your screen please and turn on your camera yeah mm -hmm. uh, you can see my screen yeah yeah, and full, full screen, please, because I only see the, the PowerPoint. Um, you you have uh, 15 minutes, please, for your presentation. And next, we, we have a, a, a question round. OK, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I will present a research classification of EEG signals from imagine state movements based on a model of executed movements. I am Roberto Escorcia, and together with Rocío Ortega and Lilian Rodriguez, we have conducted this study. Before diving into details, it's essential to understand the significance of EEG signals in the fields of neuroscience and biomedical engineering. As pointed out in the article by Milan et al., non-invasive brain-machine interaction is on the rise with EEG playing a pivotal role. With this technology, patients with disabilities may regain control of their wheelchairs using through or regain functionality as an amputated limb through a robotic prosthesis. Our research results around a completing hypothesis. We believe that imaginative movements can activate neurons similar to actual movements. However, there is an inhibition preventing the physical execution of the movement. The premise formed the foundation to, of our study, capturing neural activation signals to compare it and validate our hypothesis. To test it, we use a neuroauratech electroencephalogram, placing three electrodes in the position C3, CC, and C4 positions as per 10 training standard. We collaborated with a 23-year-old woman who performed both imagined and executed movements with her red chain, like you can watch in the video. We can use a captures of each type alternating between imagined and executed movements. It's lasting 10 seconds. After data acquisition, uh, the data was the data underwent preprocessing, which include applying a bandpass filter from eight 
225 hertz and normalization. Subsequently, we extracted relevant features from EEG signals like medium absolute value, fast Fourier transform, entropy, alpha band power, discrete cosine transform, and discrete sin transform. So we won't delve into the technical details today. It's crucial to emphasize that the model uses thickness on the quality of the data feed into it. For our AI model, we opted for support vector machine or SBM through a tuning process. We optimized the C and gamma parameters inherent to the algorithm to achieve the best results using an experimental approach. Ultimately, our data was split with 80% used for training and 20% for testing. We uh, make a uh, graphics like you can see in the left side, image movements by each electrode, C4, C3, and CC, and the right side, executed movements. So with these results, we, we find are promising. We achieve an accuracy of 72% for image movements, like you can see in the confusion matrix. True, these numbers are an ideal or a typical experiment in AI models. They highlight the potential of our approach, especially considering the complexity tied to working with huge data. In conclusion, to merge of BCI with artificial intelligence holds immense potential. Our results suggest the feasibility of using BCIs in a more intuitive manner, especially in the scenarios where the users are unable to make physical movements. We see multiple avenues for the progression of this research. We are doubling into individual variables, aiming for BCIs tailored for each individual's needs, exploring new algorithms and futures to enhance our accuracy, and securing broader application for this technology. And this is a short presentation, but we sincerely thank you for attention. We now open the floor for questions. Great. Thank you very much. Presentation. Um, you have questions? Anybody have questions? Yeah. Okay. We have in the in the chat some questions. Three questions. The first one: How many volunteers did you have? We have only one volunteers for uh, for this data. The second uh, question is, why did you decide to use this transform and not other data mining type techniques? Sorry, I don't, I don't understand. Why did you decide to use this transform and not other data mining techniques? Oh, I have a little problem with my connection. You can write on the chat. Okay, the question is, why did you decide to use this transform? I think you, you present several things like that, that. Okay, and it was good. You didn't use another technique. Why this, the justification of using this transform? Uh, this transform, which the AI what? model or? Discrete transform. Discrete transform.
Mm. Okay. The question is why you, you did you use this transform and the, the justification? Why why if you don't transform? Confirm. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, the, the, are you hearing hearing us here in the, in the, in the room? Yeah. Uh, so did, did you understand the question? Yeah. Why did you use this transform? Sorry, but I don't understand which transform the AI model or features okay um i i, I think that the the feeder transform and discrete transform the the, the transform the, that you use to extract features okay the feature extraction is mm -hmm. based on the state of art we don't at the moment it wasn't the purpose of the study so their select based on the state of art so these features was selected by state of art and uh, ai model support vector machine equals b select by state of art and there is another one question how did you check that inter that interferences did not affect your measurements yeah we could be a little noise of in these signals it could be the subject it doesn't pay attention for a restriction or blind could be a noise on these signals or another uh, movement or another things the subject have Uh, more questions? I have uh, also a question. Uh, you, there is a video in your presentation that there is a, a hand holding an, an item, and there is a, when the, the, the person uh, is making a movement, and in the other uh, side of the, of the video, only is holding the, the, the item. Yeah. So, why why did the, the person did the person uh, hold still holds the the item in the imagine movement because i think that holding the 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 item there is a feedback to to the brain that there is some object in the hand so why why not uh, only imagine without holding the 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 item well we <clears throat> we say to the woman uh, think about the executed movement only in this case only imagine the movement but we say to the woman that think like her like her executed there movement. is a, a there is a still a feedback isn't it to the to the brain because there is a, a an item in the hand and and there is not a 100 that it is imagining the movement because there is something in the hand i think that it is better to don't 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 have anything in the hand and only imagine the movement because the the feedback to the brain is still at, at least because there is holding an item in the hand so yes. I, I think that it it, it could be better to uh, not using items 
holding items and only imagine, 100% imagine the movement. Yeah, because I think that this application is for, for, for instance, for people that doesn't have the an, an arm or, or the hand, for instance. So yeah. they, they need to imagine the movement to, I don't know, to, to activate a, a bionic arm, for instance. Okay. So uh, uh, may, maybe it, it is better to not not holding physically, but only imagine the, the movement. It, it okay, because be, I uh, think that there is a there is a still a feedback. Okay, in, in the signal, a response because because the the hand is is holding the item. Okay, it will be an, a great option. And, and why do you only use the right hand? What about the left hand? Well, in this case, to for the time, we need to cut the story. And in this case, only focus on right hand. OK. Well, <clears throat> questions? No. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. And um, we will have now the, the last one. I don't know because there are some minutes to start the, the other presentation. But if the the authors are so many minutes. Yeah, they, they, they are online. Uh, hello. Okay. Uh, the next presentation is is by Khan, Hassan, Ahmed, and Islam. But we are going to wait until night forty um, to start your presentation, please. Uh, we have five minutes, and we will start at night forty, please. And share your screen and, and prepare your, your your presentation, please. In this, in the meantime, uh, am I the next presenter now, Abid Hassan? We will we will we wait to present uh, on the night forty here because there is some time to start your presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.
Okay. Uh, are you ready? Can you check yes, your can screen no. and also turn on your camera? Uh, so I, I'm seeing that the share option is not visible to me. I think, can you do something from your end? Option is, let me see, there are, um, there is a, a, a bottom. Uh, there is a red yes, bottom is a, at, at the corner, uh, uh, and there is another bottom. Uh, there is a uh, there is a share option beside the mic, the but I don't is. see. Yeah, I, I I don't see there any uh, sharing option for you me. See? Also, the camera is turned yeah. off. Hello. Hello. Can you share the screen, please? Uh, I'm not being able to share my screen. Can I just come uh, again? I, can I just enter this meeting again? Yeah. I'm not seeing the yeah. option available for me. Please, can you can you send us the the presentation and we can project the presentation here? Can you please share uh, any uh, email address or any sort of thing that there I can present, or I can just drop in here? Can I just rejoin? I can. Can I just come and rejoin? Have you got my, got uh, my uh, presentation? You have, uh, yeah, we have your, your, your link here, but we have tried to download it. Pero si lo pueden bajar usted.
hello, can you hear me now? Hello. Okay. Am I able? Uh, do you have the presentation? Yes, sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, I think there was a technical glitch. I'm presenting my presentation. We can see you. We can see you. We can see. We can see your screen. Okay. Good. So okay. thank you very okay. much. We can start now with this presentation. Uh, very quick because we we lost a lot of time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So I'm um, Abid Hassan from Department of Computer Science uh, and Engineering from North South University of Bangladesh. I'm here to present my paper on multi-level Bengal abusive comments classification using problem transformation method. So let's move to the introduction. So my paper, pre uh, this presentation focuses on the multi-level classification of Bengali abusive social media comments. So we have categorized text into five levels, toxic, threat, obscene, insult and racism. So in this paper, we have evaluated three multi-level approaches, binary relevance, level power set, and classification uh, classifier chain, combined with three popular machine learning algorithms, uh, multinomial naive bias, random forest, and logistic regression. So we are going to have nine combinations uh, by these three approaches and three machine learning algorithms. So among all the algorithms, we have achieved uh, most accuracy and effectiveness on power set and logistic uh, regression approach. So let's move to the motivation. So the mo main motivation of our project was to develop a multi-level classification system for Bengali abusive social media comments and evaluate the performance of three level approaches and three machine learning algorithms. Though there were works done on uh, Bengali abusive languages, they are not mostly done on multi-level environment and also the uh, evaluation of uh, the uses of these three approaches and three machine learning algorithms in one research is very new and we wanted to assess the classification scenarios including five four three two levels and identify the most effective approach for the accurate content moderation and last but not the least contribute to the safer and more uh, responsible online interaction in bengali so during our background research, we found some uh, related works and we have we are mentioning three works. Uh, one is done on Bengali newspaper articles that gone through CNN and by LSTM um, model that gives a binary result positive or negative. And the second uh, work is done on Bengali toxic AB comments that goes through BP MLL model that is multi-level, but the accuracy is not very high, which we achieved a high accuracy in our research. And the last is Bengali social media comments uh, that gone through CLSTM model, and this is multi-class, and you can see the accuracy and uh, their sources mentioned in the uh, presentation. So let's talk about how we are different from other works. So multi-level expertise are our core functionality in this project we wanted to explore the multi-level classification and give a Bengali tailored result, though there were many works done on English language, but for Bengali, this is very new, the multi-level classification and with a very high success rate, of course. And we have done a thorough assessment of multi-level approaches. And finally, we have uh, achieved a very high result, which is unlikely to other papers. And also we are uh, done on five content categories that was not done before in multi-level domain. So this is the primary, uh, this is the methodology. So at the first point, we are collecting the data. We collected a data of almost 10,220 uh, rows, Bengali data set. I have mentioned the uh, source uh, underneath and we have prepared the data first started with translation, then cleaning, and then uh, we extracted the features using TF, IDF, and count vectorization. So we have used uh, Google Translation a library for the translation and cleaned the data using net, net text. So 
And then, as we mentioned, my multi-level approaches and multi-level algorithms, you get to see uh, nine combination, nine unique combinations of these algorithm and approaches combined. And then the model training, I trained the model with 80% of the data and I kept the rest for the testing. So let's talk about, uh, in short, about the multi-level approaches and the algorithms I'm going to use. So first, let's introduce with binary elements. So this is a uh, approach that treats level indep uh, independently. So simply multi-level classification by creates a, a binary classification. So no matter how much the nodes will be, it will be uh, transformed into uh, simple by uh, binary classification, and it will uh, one by one uh, iter with binary. Uh, classification uh, characteristics and then classification uh, classifier chain. So chains binary class binary classifiers for multi-level prediction and then it is uh, it considers level dependency by order of the chain. So here if the relationship is ordered, it is very useful. Uh, it is done in suggestions like how movie suggestions scattered from horrors to action, if they are chained in a manner, then it is very easier to do the analysis with classifier chain. And then there is level power set. So this basically transform multi-level problems into multi-class problems and consider different levels combinations for classifications. And if you talk about the algorithms, I have used uh, multinomial naive bias. This, uh, uh, this gets a probabilistic classification method and ideal for text classification with discrete feature, which is very common for uh, the sentiment analysis works done throughout the domain. Uh, there is logistic regression. Uh, this is a statistical method for analyzing data sets. Though, so this method models the relationship between uh, input attributes and outcomes. This is commonly used for binary classification tasks uh, effective for sentiment analysis of text data. And last but not the least, uh, random forest. So uh, it assembles learning techniques for classification and regression, uh, constructs multiple decision trees, and combines the trees to predict more reliable results. So this is uh, a data sample for we use for the model training. You can see that there are Bengalis and then it translates to English, and then there are categories, uh, toxic threat, obscene insult, and racism. So as we uh, as we are working on three multi-level approaches and three multi-level algorithms, we finally get nine combinations. Uh, and as I told earlier that 80% of the data are used, exactly 8175 comments are used for model training, and then we use 2044 comments for final testing. So then we go for the model evaluation metrics. So there are some traditional metrics like accuracy, precision, recalls, F1 score, of course, that are used in this research. So we have also used some alternative uh, metrics that can evaluate the multi-level domain uh, and multi-level analysis more uh, accurately. So there is macro uh, averaging and confusion metrics and Hamming loss. So we have used these extra three method to uh, evaluate our research more thoroughly. And then we go for the result and analysis part. So the result and analysis, we explored three multi-level approaches and three multi-level uh, learning models that combines into nine combinations. Our best performing approach was level power set with logistic regression, of course, and achieve a high accuracy of 88%, 88.08% for five levels. 90.12% for four levels, and it goes up as the level decreases. Uh, logistic uh, regression continuously outperform other models in our uh, experiment. So varying the accuracy in real, uh, binary relevance, logistic regression, and classified chain logistic regression combines. Uh, so and accuracy decreases as the levels increases, as I told earlier. So this is a table representing the result of power set logistic regression. So we can see that the accuracy for level five is uh, five level is 88.07%. And as the level decreases, the accuracy increases. The precision is also the same. And we say we can see the same result for all the matrices. 
and this is the result for each level classification. So this is also kind of same. So the toxic comments are uh, the tox uh, the more the level decreases, the accuracy increases for toxic threat of sin insult and which is expected. So this is a comparison with the paper that I mentioned earlier. So these papers are uh, this paper presents significantly lower performance score than ours and you can see the result here. So for the conclusion, I want to say that I implemented a multi-level classification for Bengali text. So I, I, I found that my, my process uh, improved the classification accuracy through efficient techniques and I have aims to improve the methodology for the future and my goal is to uh, contribute to the Bengali sentiment analysis field. So thank you very much. I'm up for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we have some questions here. Yeah. Have you considered have you, co okay, sorry. have you considered context-free grammar for the pre-analysis before sending to the machine learning models? Can you please repeat the question? I, I didn't really get it. Consider the use of context-free grammars to detect a specific sentence or uh, before you send to the machine learning to help the machine learning a little bit. So, uh, so we, I use grammar. a data. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I use. So I use the Bengali data set that directly got translated into uh, Google Trends. So I can say that the data set is imbalanced, and yes, that is con context-free grammar. Okay. Anyone? Question? I have a, a, a basic question. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's, uh, what is the main difference between multi-label and multi-class classification? So the uh, multi-label classification can detect multiple uh, uh, multiple uh, instances in single uh, multiple. What I can say that. Uh, multiple classes in single intents, but the multi-class only can detect a single uh, characteristic. For example, if I present you a uh, sentence or if I present you an image like the background behind me, in multi-class there will be detectable only the single single the watch will be detectable in multi-class, but when I'm talking about multi-level, you can detect a human, that's me, there is a watch and there is a door and there is a Almira or closet, you can say in your language. So this is the basic difference of multi-class and multi-level. Thank you. Question? OK, well, we are on time now. So Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your consideration. I, I, I thank you very much. Sorry. And we finish this this session. We'll continue in the, in the afternoon. Great. Thank you. Thank you.